on designing and conducting my own geology field work 26 to 31 July 2018. So I'm filming this two years later, Thursday, 22 February 2024. I am Tannis Corley Leonardi. This is my YouTube channel, Tannis Leonardi. I am Tannis Leonardi. This is my YouTube channel, Tannis Leonardi. I'm a she, her, hers. And this is um something, so I started working, I was in school for geology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And about, say, 2014, I started to develop my own kind of interests in things that kind of, like a, what I kind of termed a passion project. And so a decade later, I've decided to make a YouTube video kind of addressing some of the work I've done on that passion project. And so it's something that I have a bunch of papers that I've printed, a bunch of papers saved on my computer, backed up. A uh, bunch of like field sites of interest and stuff like that and essentially in like 2000 I would say the catalyst year was kind of 2017 where I was like let me out you know instead of this getting pushed to the side my passion project I'm going to make it a project I work on on the side whether or not I ever publish on it kind of thing and so in 2018 I made it a reality so from Thursday 26 July 2018 to Tuesday 31 July 2018 I was on the ground conducting geology field work. It was 100% of my design, 100% the sites I chose to go. Not all of the sites I went were um, fruitful so to speak in finding the samples I was looking for but I did get to go to the samples and at least try and find the outcrops and stuff like that. And it spanned, so this was a project collecting samples and observing deposits from monogenetic volcanic eruptions in the Hawaiian Islands. So my field work sites were on multiple islands, so Oahu and Kauai. And so I still have, um, so it was successful. I had a friend that came with me. We had our um, tents and we were out there and it was kind of the entire day. Like when we were on Kauai, it was like, that was literally all we did was field work. It, it was literally just geology field work for a number of days, multiple days. And uh, went on Kauai, on Oahu, I went and I saw um, one of my undergraduate thesis advisors I had like a meeting with her and stuff and so um I went for a swim at Manoa pool which was the first time I swam in a long course 50 meter long pool like at like for lap swimming kind of thing I'd been in I competed at the King County Aquatic Swim Center for a water polo but that wasn't like swimming laps in a 50 meter long pool so I'd been in one but not swam like if that makes any sense kind of thing um so that was a big first. That was July 2018 as well. Um, part of this trip, um, it was between, um, my friend was at work and so I was doing geology field work and getting supplies and stuff like that. And so like, it was like in a, a lunch break with exercise, <laughs> um, kind of thing. For me, that's essential getting in my exercise. So that, that time I was swimming. And let's see, what's the status of this? So it was successful, I designed it. I would say it, I was entirely happy with it. Uh, it was a bit stressful, but it wasn't overly stressful. Uh, I have, all, so I have all that stuff I've mentioned. I have the samples there. I We did excellent on collecting. So I was in charge, <laughs> he was my field assistant kind of thing. Um, and so, but I think I did the labeling and finding it. <laughs> um, he was, it was kind of more like, okay. Um, he was helpful though, kind of thing. And, and so in labeling the bags and stuff like that, um, I, it's, I still have the samples. They're all labeled with the GPS coordinates of where I got them and stuff like that. Um, so, um, what's the status of this? This is the, one of these projects that because I've been working on it for years it's like and I've done experimental petrology where um made rocks you know quenched them and then made thin sections like I've actually you know take a rock that I've made cut it down to a really thin polish it down and then look at it under a microscope and take chemical samples and stuff like that I've done that already for a different project so the next step if I wanted to do something similar is cutting the rock down, which I could do myself, but I don't have the resources for currently. Um, but I could also like 
send my rocks off to people who make thin sections. Right? I know people, um, there's also companies that do that. Um, but then I would need a microscope and that kind of stuff, depending on what I wanted to do. So what's my way of saying? The step forward, if I wanted to do like petrography, is relatively simple. Right, I'm one, so let's say Noah Lyles is like, I have a contract offer where I'm your one and only employer for you being my runner. Um, my my employee re contracted paid roommate, maybe there's an additional part of that, but he's my employer or, or team Niles or Niles, Noah Lyles, team Lyles, team Noah Lyles, wh whatever the uh, employer entity would be um, focusing on endurance and um, physique slash all weather running kind of uh, technique and physique kind of thing. Um, so if there is an offer like that, that currently exists, I say, yes, I want that contract. Yes. So I'm saying, I'm like uh, a really high end microscope might cost between 10,000 and a hundred thousand dollars kind of thing. But then I'd need the space to work on it and that kind of stuff. But my point being is this is a project that depending on how I would want to proceed would be it's because of everything I've already done and the multiple years of lead up and the field work I conducted and kind of how it was conducted. It's a relatively straight forward. It takes me moving in with my soulmate and or soulmates and, you know, a little bit of income or money to put into this and get the resources. And it's like, I could have start delving into the results, right? It's a, um, it, 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 there's a, a way of saying like, the parts or barriers to it being a project I can work on in my spare time have been removed. I've already done that kind of thing. Um, like in terms of having actual samples. Um, so unless they get thrown out or something, you know, but, okay. Um, ho hoping not that kind of thing, but, uh, so it's a, you know, m one or two life changes away, so to speak of this being something I could actually have results on. I don't know if I would publish though, especially if I weren't, with a research agency. I don't know. <laughs> Could I submit a um, paper to a peer reviewed journal with my affiliation being Team Noah Lyles or Team Lyles in science? Uh, that's definitely not done. <laughs> and I have not heard of it. <laughs> right? Um, but I, and I don't know. Would the reviewers just laugh it away? Would I make a YouTube video instead? Right? This is a part of, this is actually part of a project I'm working on contextualizations of my performances. So I'm not including papers because it's kind of like an application. Can we get this published? Um, if it's good research, there's a bunch of stuff that's done that leads up to that final paper, right? So essentially, like, take my undergraduate thesis. There were, there was thin section, thin section construction. There was ex the experiments themselves. There was chemical analyses. There was sample collection or finding the samples, right? Each of those could be broken down into a different performance component. Right. Um, so the performance and, and the results from each performance, right? Kind of even if it's just a summary of what was done. Um, so in that sense, the videos would be the final product. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> YouTube videos getting cited in peer reviewed publications. If that's where the information breaks, right? The news breaks and science is the break, right? Um, if it documents something, it's, it, that's proper attribution kind of thing. Um, even if it's not mainstream currently, that kind of depends on the person. Some people do cite that kind of stuff. Um, even if just a link in their scientific talk, right? Kind of thing. Um, so yeah, even if at just like a brown bag seminar or something like that. So that's kind of where I'm at. So yes to Noah Lyles being my employer, if I'm reading the signs of the universe correct, that that does exist. So yes to him. Um, what's the, then Jacob Ingebrigtsen is fighting to be my first training partner. Dominique Saposlai, my first business partner. Kind of thing. Yeah. And Ingebrigtsen, my first lady's choice, sweet, sweet loving. And that's the term for it. And my Dominique Saposlai, my first waked, waking while I'm awake wedding, lady's choice. All right. There's like two, two different types of men. There's like the lady's choice and the very forceful and they will take what they want. So Nathan, Adrian, be the very forceful, take what they want. And then the lady's choice. So the black or white thing, you know, kind of comes down to like, one has been checkmarked. What about the other one? 
in black or white, there's not, it's okay, maybe a better, yes or no, right, something that's really just, there's only two options, there's no maybe or in between, it's, it's like it happens or it doesn't, you know, it happens, but there's like two different ways it could happen, and it's very most simple structure. Anyway, that's on designing and conducting my own geology fieldwork with the fieldwork conducted 26 to 31 July 2018. It's a project that is a few life changes away from me getting results whether or not I actually would pursue publishing them. And it's a little bit of a contextualization of one of my performances in geology. And that was me, that's a self-employed project um, and something that I'd been working on for a few years before I connected the fieldwork. So there you go.